Make sure to pull over next time you see a funeral procession. This is why, pull over Abby shouted. I thought you didn't want to be late, I replied. I don't suit, but there's a funeral procession coming and you were supposed to stop. She gestured at the pair of police motorcycles that were approaching us from the opposite direction. Behind them was a hearse and a seemingly endless line of cars. With her hazard lights on, I kept driving. Seriously, Abby scoffed. You're going to get a ticket. No, I'm not, I said. It's not illegal to keep driving. Are you sure about that? Positive, I said. I took a driving class in high school, and someone asked the teacher about it. He said that as long as you don't interfere with a right of way, you can keep driving. Legal or not, it's still disrespectful, she chided me. If we had left 20 minutes ago like I wanted, this wouldn't even be an issue. She ignored my retort, choosing to watch the hearse drive past us instead. From the corner of my eye, I saw Abby turn her head, continuing to watch the hearse through the back window. A second later, she screamed and grabbed hold of my arm. I hit the brakes and swerved to the side of the road. What the hell is wrong with you? I pulled my arm away from her. You could have caused an accident. She couldn't speak, so she lifted a trembling hand and pointed her finger in the direction of the back seat. I turned my head until I could see what she was pointing at. Holy crap, I screamed before unbuckling my seatbelt and stumbling out of the car, not wanting to be left alone. Abby fled the car as well. Who the hell is that? I pointed at the pale, well-dressed, elderly gentleman in the back seat of my car. He was just sitting there staring off into space with an expressionless look on his gaunt face. I think it's a dead guy from the hearse, Abby said. Why would you think that? Because he just suddenly appeared when the hearse drove by, she explained. Why do you think I screamed? Well, how do we get rid of him? That's your problem. She pulled her phone out of her pocket and began making a phone call. What are you doing? Asking Beth to come pick me up, she replied. There's no way I'm getting back into that car. Beth was her sister. I didn't want to get back into it either, so I asked if I could get a ride with her. Beth arrived 30 minutes later. Abby went to open the car door, but she stopped it. When the elderly man materialized in the back seat, are you getting in or not? Beth snapped. Apparently, she couldn't see the creepy old guy that was sitting behind her. Only Abby and I couldn't. I think we're going to walk, I said. Yeah, Abby agreed. A walk sounds good. 